Among the latest unemployment numbers are out. The U.S. Labor Department reports more than 2.4 million claims were filed last week as more companies announce layoffs or bankruptcies. This brings the total of unemployment claims in the last nine weeks to nearly 39 million. But the numbers have gradually declined since the peak at the end of March. Here in Washington, new data shows 145,000 initial claims for unemployment last week, a 31 percent increase over the week before. If you are waiting for your unemployment check, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. That's because the State Employment Security Department has been battling an increasing number of fake unemployment claims. And now officials say they have to delay payments even longer. King 5's Callie Greenberg is in Linwood with more. It was last week that the State Employment Security Department stalled payments for two days. Now this week, they're saying people who applied for unemployment benefits will have to wait several additional days as they work to get a handle on the number of fake claims that they're seeing. Now it was just yesterday that the state reported the unemployment rate in Washington hit 15.4% for the month of April. So on top of working to filter out which claims are real and which are fake, the department is still looking to help thousands who need unemployment. Earlier this week, we reported that the U.S. Secret Service is investigating who might be filing these fraudulent claims, and that includes a Nigerian crime ring who has been targeting Washington state's unemployment by using stolen identities. The Employment Security Department says it's in April. It unknowingly paid out $1.6 million in fraudulent claims. Now, with the current stall on payments, they're looking to root out future fraud as well as theft. They're also adding fraud investigators, and they're asking people to provide more information for those future claims. Now, King 5 has spoke to a few of those victims of these fake claims, and what they're saying is that while they didn't apply for unemployment benefits, they're getting a letter in the mail that says your employment benefits are in the works, and they're wondering what happens? So the Employment Security Department is saying if you get one of these letters and did not file for unemployment, you should reach out to them immediately. In fact, there's a fraud application that you can fill out right on their website. In Linwood, Callie Greenberg, King 5 News. In Pierce County, the mayors of Bonnie Lake and Sumner want Governor Inslee to know their communities are ready to get back to business. In a joint letter, Bonnie Lake Mayor Neil Johnson and Sumner Mayor Bill Pugh argue that local businesses are ready to responsibly reopen. They say their cities shouldn't be held to the same standards as larger cities like Seattle and Tacoma. They also argue that the smaller boutique shops in their communities are probably safer than customers shopping at big box stores like Fred Meyer or Costco. Let's go. Let's give you a live look right now in Olympia, where tax activist and gubernatorial candidate Tim Eyman is leading another rally against the governor's lockdown mandate. Eyman has been protesting the stay home order and even filed a lawsuit saying that it violates both the state and U.S. constitutions. Eyman is joined by Mike Jellison, the owner of an Arlington gym who was just sued by the attorney general for defying the governor's order and reopening his business last week. The Washington State Fair is still scheduled for September. In fact, organizers say they are planning, quote, the state's biggest party as social distancing measures are relaxed and the economy reopens. They say adjustments will be made as necessary in order to minimize the health impacts of COVID-19. So at this point, the fair will run September 4th through the 27th in Puyallup. But don't expect to see the hydros again this summer. Seafair events have been canceled because of coronavirus. Seafair has been a Northwest staple for more than 70 years. Things started to evolve and change and became more of a reality. It just wasn't able to come together, whether it be through social distancing or through sponsorship or just a combination of everything. It was just not something that we could really pull together and we thought it would be better to just completely reschedule for next year and come back even stronger in 2021. Seafair organizers say they're still brainstorming other ideas for perhaps a smaller Seafair event this summer. They say the Blue Angels and the 4th of July fireworks show are already confirmed for next year. Let's get a peek outside right now with our tower cam on the waterfront. Some clouds out there right now, but not too bad. Rebecca Stevenson is here with a look at what to expect the rest of the day. Hey, Rebecca. 
the high, Mimi. Boy, we started out so soggy today. We had so much rain coming down, especially in the convergence zone where the wind wraps around the Olympic Mountains and then meets up again right over Puget Sound. You could see on the Doppler radar, there's plenty of rain showers moving in still on the coast and into the Olympics. But also, we have a new batch that's stretching from almost to Everett, but across the southern portion of, of uh, Whidbey Island, across Discovery Bay, Quilcene down to Silverdale. That's going to be tracking its way back into central Seattle here shortly. And you can see plenty of showers also for the South Sound around Raymond and a new round near Rochester, but still just west of Olympia. The rain is impressive. School net station showing 61 hundredths of an inch of rain today for Woodenville. Bothell at St. Brendan Catholic School recording it. 45 hundredths of an inch and four tenths of an inch for Shoreline at Shorecrest High School. Today, we're going to expect clouds to stick around for Seattle much of the day. We'll have sort of an intermittent rain and intermittent sun breaks. We've been seeing a few of those from time to time around, but the temperatures are going to stay cool in the 50s. We'll have your full forecast coming up and we'll talk about the rest of the week and, of course, Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, Rebecca. A man in Thurston County is behind bars for allegedly killing his wife. Sheriff's deputies went to their home in the Clearwood community of Yelm last night. That's where the man said he accidentally shot his wife. Deputies tried to save the woman, but she didn't survive. The husband was taken into custody. Four children, all under the age of 10, were not hurt in the shooting and were turned over to Child Protective Services. Detectives in Kitsap County are asking for anyone with pictures or video of a fire in the Silverdale area to come forward. A fire broke out at a home on Scold Road near Clear Creek Trail yesterday afternoon. As firefighters were putting it out, they found a body inside the home. Investigators later learned that several witnesses were taking pictures and video of the fire before firefighters got there. So if you have any video or pictures, please contact the Kitsap County Sheriff's Department. Seattle police are investigating a second racially charged incident this week. Surveillance video shows a man attacking an Asian couple in downtown Seattle, apparently blaming them for the coronavirus. Investigators say the man yelled at them, it's all your fault, and then spit on them. Also last weekend, an Asian man was verbally accosted outside the Soto Home Depot. Kurt Lynn called 911 to report it, but he says he felt police ignored his concerns. He said, well, it sounds like there's no crime. It sounds like this man was using his, um, he's exercising his First Amendment rights, um, regardless of what he says or how you feel about it. He's um, allowed to say that because of the First Amendment. SPD has since forwarded Lynn's case to the Bias Crimes Unit and the Office of Police Accountability. And Lynn says Police Chief Carmen Best called him to personally apologize. Today, President Trump is touring a Michigan Ford plant making ventilators for the coronavirus crisis. The visit comes a day after the president threatened to withhold funding from the state over its absentee and mail-in voting plans. Tracy Potts has more. The coronavirus crisis is spilling over into November's election. President Trump threatening to withhold federal funding from Nevada and Michigan for allowing residents to mail in their vote. Mail-in ballots are a very dangerous thing. They're, they're subject to massive fraud. Mr. President, it is a federal crime to withhold money from states with the purpose of interfering with people's right to vote. The president backed off that threat for Michigan as he prepares to visit a Ford plant there today, now making ventilators. Congress may take up the mail vote issue. Money for the Postal Service is in the Democrats' $3 trillion coronavirus stimulus. This is a health issue in addition to a convenience issue for the American people. But Republicans are more likely to compromise on a proposed fix to the Paycheck Protection Program, making small business loans easier to forgive. Senate Republicans' bold program is turning potential pink slips into paychecks every single day. Today's new weekly unemployment numbers show 2.4 million filed jobless claims last week, bringing the total to nearly 39 million during the COVID-19 crisis. Tracy Potts, NBC News.